The state of Indiana, along the nation's hotbed of basketball, stages its 36th annual championship basketball tournament. The 22nd day of March 1947 finds Cage fans arriving from all sections of the state at the Butler University campus in Indianapolis. Outside the huge field house, thousands of basketball mad Hoosiers congregate, buying newspapers to check last minute lineups, team badges and souvenirs, and many are there just hoping to get tickets. Games are played in the Mammoth Butler Fieldhouse, which seats 14,940. Thus far, up to the finals, 1,241,000 spectators have thrilled to Hoosierland's favorite sport. Chip day at hand, these four schools will clash for honors. The excited crowd now waits for the tip off of the first game between Terre Haute Garfield Purple Eagles and Marion Giants. Terre Haute coach Willard Kurt will start Ronnie Bland, number 13, and Jay Center, number five, at forward. Clyde Lovelett, number 16, at center. Guards are William Neff, number 11, and Bob Skitt, number four. Marion coach Woodrow Weir nominates Donald Google, double zero, and Donald Petford, number 11, at forwards, with Bill Earnhardt, number 44, at center. Ralph Ferguson, number 12, and Dick Wagley, number 13, are starting guards. It's down in front, and the game is on. Lovelett takes the tip for Garfield, wearing the dark uniforms. Marion wears the white. Passes, and the loose ball is scooped up by Marion. A beautiful fast break, a pass to Wegley under the basket. And he nets two points to send the Marion Giants ahead, three to two. Dick Wegley shoots and scores on a pivot from the foul circle. Again, narrowing the margin to one point with the score, is fouled and tries a free throw. It's perfect, and the score is 41 to 23. The Butler Fieldhouse in Indianapolis is the scene of the Indiana High School Athletic Association's 39th Annual State Basketball Finals. Fans from all over the Hoosier State, over 15,000 of them, are here to witness the three final games. Only four teams have weathered the sectional, regional, and semifinal tournaments and have earned the right to compete in today's championship event. The first afternoon game will be fought between the Marion Giants and the Madison Cubs. For Marion, Coach Woody Weir's starting lineup will include Norman Edwards and Pat Klein at forwards, Dean Vogel and Jim Barley at guards, and Francis Fisher at center. Madison's coach Ray Eddy will start Ted Server and Buddy Bunton at forwards, Spence Schneider at center, and Don McCauley and Ed Cheatham at guards. There's the tip. It's taken by Marion to Klein, who runs it out of bounds. Madison takes over. It's down to Server. Back to Cheatham, and a two-handed push shot is up and short. Schneider was fouled, and he'll draw two chair. And over to Vogel. A bounce pass to Klein. He shoots and hits. Marion leads two to one. Or changes hands. And deep end to Fisher, who sinks it for Marion. The Giants are beginning to narrow that lead. Well, let's take a look now at the Muncie Central Bearcats as our Channel 31 game of the day features the Muncie Central Bearcats, the Marion Giants. Muncie going... Taking a look at the Marion Giant lineup. For this one, it's Bobby Short wearing number 20, one guard spot. Jim Lee, number 32, at the other. The center is Fern Owensby wearing number 42. And the forwards, Willie Keyes, number 34, 
and Harold Curdy wearing number 40. Out of Curdy. Curdy now on old going feet to Curdy. He's underneath, puts it in the air. He hits it. Four to two. Basketball time again from Marion's Memorial Coliseum. It's high school basketball action, and today the game between the Marion Giants and the Anderson Indians. Good evening, everyone. This is Terry Hawkins with the play-by-play -play as Anderson's Indians invade Marion to try to mar the Giants' thus far perfect record. And those are tonight's probable starting lineups, and we'll have the tip-off to get this game underway in just a moment as the Booster Club performs across the way. Basketball time again for Marion's Memorial Coliseum. It's high school basketball action, and today the game between the Marion Giants and the Kokomo Wildcats. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Terry Hawkins with the play-by-play. -play. The Giants will test the state's second-rated club who will sport a big, if not an exceptionally tall, starting five. The Cats' front line will average six feet, two inches tall, and almost 190 pounds, as opposed to the Giants' 6'3 and 175 pounds. Guard Dick Graff will present the biggest scoring threat to the Giants with a 17.4 game average. Harold Curdy, plagued by a case of the flu this week, is expected to start tonight. The six foot four inch senior forward leads the club in point average with 23 and rebounding average 13 a game. The Little Giants won the preliminary contest over the Kokomo 49 to 45. And now while both clubs are warming up down on the floor, let's take a look at tonight's probable starting lineup. For the visiting Kokomo Wildcats, at forward number 40, Harold Curdy standing at 6'4". At the other forward, Steve Ward, 6'1", wearing number 34. At center, 6'4", Kenny Stewart, wearing number 32. At guard, number 20, standing at 5 feet 8 inches tall, Clyde Thornell. And at the other guard, starting at 6 feet tall, Jerry Cannon, wearing number 50. The Giants are playing under the direction of head coach Jack Colescott and assistant coach Dick Persinger. And those are tonight's probable starting lineup. And we'll have Tom Hillegoss for Kokomo, jumping against Kenny Stewart for the Giants. Kokomo in the dark uniforms, Marion in the light. Tip goes to Marion, Steve Ward shoots, score! And the Giants get off to a two to nothing lead here early in the ball game. The Cats not pressing. Out to Curdy. Curdy takes a long one. Good! And there's time out on the floor. We'll be back with more Marion High School basketball in just a moment. And there's time out on the floor. We'll be back with more Marion High School basketball in just a moment.
Cornell. Cornell shoots. Score! Cornell shoots. Score! Six, 34 seconds remaining in this ball game. Intercepted. Curry shoots and scores. 70 to 66. What? A lot of pressure on Harold Curdy right here. Shot is good. He gets the next one. 70 to 68. The Giants trailing by two. Pandemonium here in the Coliseum. Ten seconds on the clock in the in this ball game.
I'd like to have superstar Zach Randolph come out and be superstar. Press. They get it across the line. That's Javon Price. Townsend. It goes to Meade on the far side. Working the ball around. The shot by Townsend's good. That's Allen. 
guarding Townsend. They get it into the offensive court. Sutter goes to the baseline, turns around, one hands it. Good. Once again, Englefield House, second game in the finals for 1968. Shortridge and Marion in the action right now as Townsend drives and scores for Marion. Seven. Shortridge up by six. Marion can cut that to four now if they can connect here. It's Townsend with the ball. In the middle of the big guy, Myers. One hands it. Long rebound. Myers gets it back. Puts it up the second time and scores. Shortridge with their biggest lead at 10. 49-39 at the line will be Joe Sutter. He connects on the first. He'll get another. On the clock. Little Greg Allen. Double team. Pass intended for Taylor's. Picked up by Sutter. Drives in and gets it. Sutter across the stripe. Gets it to Javon Price. To me. Looks in the middle to Sutter. One hander. Gets it. 48. Two minutes on the clock. Rancher double teamed. He finally gets it down on the offensive court to Javon Price and Mead. Mead dumps it in. They can pull within one if they can score here. That's Sutter with the ball to Mead. Mead has the hot hand. Leonard Taylor connects on one charity toss and Shortridge is ahead 56 to 54 with less than half a minute left. Marion in possession. If they hit the basket, it'll all be tied up. That's Javon Price. It goes to Ward who gets the basket. Larry Ward gets the basket as a substitute in there. And now Shortridge has 11 seconds. 10. It's all knotted. 56-56. They'll go for one. It goes to Oscar Evans. Three seconds. Will he get it? Yes. He gets it. Oscar Evans hit the basket just as the gun went off. And Shortridge defeats Marion 58-56 to, to earn the right to go into the championship game tonight. Tonight, it'll be Gary Roosevelt who won the first game, 65 to 48 over Vincennes, going against the Shortridge Blue Devils who just this minute defeated Marion's Giants 58 to 56 on a last second shot by Oscar Evans. School basketball tournament sanctioned by the Indiana High School Athletic Association and the winningest field in history is here for number 59. Three teams are unbeaten. It's never happened before in the state finals. Indianapolis, Washington, Marion, and Vincennes. And Gary Tolleston has lost only once. Here is the starting lineup for the Indianapolis Washington Continentals who have won 29 and lost none this year. Coached by Bill Green in his first year as head coach. At one forward, Tall George McGinnis, a 6'7 senior. The other forward, Jim Arnold, a 6'3 senior. At center, even taller, Steve Downing, also a senior at 6'8. One of the guards, Wayne Pack, a 5'11 senior. And senior Louis Day will start at the other guard. He is 5'10. Other members of the Washington. The starting lineups for the Marion Giants, unbeaten with 27 straight victories. Jack Skoll Colescott is the head coach. He's in his fourth year and, of course, had Marion in the state finals last year. At one forward, number 31, Danny Gunn. He's 6'2 and a senior. Senior Joe Suter will start at the other forward. He's 6'7, number 33. Number 45, Brent Myers will be the center, 6'7 and a senior. Senior Jerry Townsend plays one of the guards at 6'1. He's number 25. And Javon Price, number 43, a 6'5 senior, will be the other guard. Other members of the Marion Giants, junior John Chin at 5'11", Stuart Avis, 6'2", junior, Jerry Scroggins, a junior at 6 feet tall, Ned Wrencher, who's 6'5", and a senior, David Johnson, 6'2", and a junior, Greg Oradat, he's a sophomore at 6'5", and Don Pettiford, a 6'1", junior. Those are the tourney 12 for Marion. Townsend scores, it's 2-2. Two to two. Four... 52 51 left the clock is not working properly McGinnis shoots and scores Washington now in a 1 3 1 zone they had been playing a 2 3 
Gunn shoots and scores. First basket for Danny Gunn. All starters have now scored. It's Marion 14, Washington 10, and timeout called by the Continental. Zone defense still by Washington. Marion with a six point lead. Working around the outside, gun hits. Suter open, scores. The line. Suter from the corner, it's good again. Eight baskets for Suter, five this half, 50 to 40. Marion, stolen by Price, way outside, good. 52-40, Marion. Price shoots. It's good. That's only his third basket. 61-60, Washington. Now Marion's got to go for the bucket. Suter. Townsend, no good. McGinnis rebounds it. Out front the pack. Pack, no good. Foul called gun. That's his third. Did the gun go off? And the gun went off right there at the end as that ball was. Wayne Pack was going down court. He'll have a couple of free throws coming. Wayne Pack, who led the attack here at the end of the ball game in the final quarter, to lead Washington to, at this point, a 61-60 victory, but he's going to have some free throws. Fifth annual Indiana State High School basketball tournament. It'll be the Marion Giants against the Lagodi Lions. It's all presented on the Marion Ball Club. Bill Lester who is a 6'5 senior, Rob Acord, a 6'5 senior, and Kevin Pearson, also a 6'5 senior, along with Dave Scott, a 6'0 junior, and Doug Harris, a 6'3 senior. Jess Allen Baugh and Greg Bambaugh, also on the Marion Club. Allen Baugh, a 6'0 sophomore, and Bambaugh, a 6'1 senior. Rob Otis is a 6'4 junior, Dave, a 5'8 senior, Tuffy Charles Jackson, a 6'5 junior, Bill, a 6'3 junior. Marion is coached by Bill Green and assisted by Dan Gung. The principal is Philip Daniel, athletic director Jack Colescott. Harris with the ball on this side, puts it up and in. Doug Harris. Cole Scott puts up the 15-footer, good. Two baskets for Cole Scott, 10 to seven. Magoni now has five fouls, so Harris will be shooting the one and one. Free toss up and good. The Giants on the run, the person of Cole Scott. Cole Scott up and in. A court open. Got it. Second half underway shortly. I'm sure we'll see the same starting lineups as we did in the first half. Neither team substituted for Marion in the uh, first half was Bill Lester, Rob Acord, Kevin Pearson, Dave Colescott, and Doug Harris. And for rebounded out of there by Acord. Harris puts it up short. Rebounded by Lester, puts it up and in. And Lester with a second foul, Cole Scott at the line with a one and one. It's good. He'll get Bill Butcher, 46-34. The goatee down by 12. Acord scores. Turnaround by Pearson, up and in, good. And the foul is called on Walls, and that'll be five. Pearson at the line with a one and one. 
These are big ones for Marion. It's good. 142, Marion by nine. Pearson will try and give him a 10 point lead again. And he gets the job done with 140 left to go. It toss is good. He'll get another. 55 46. Marion leads with 28 seconds to go. Second free toss also good. And coming into the ball game is Tuffy Jackson, a 6'5 junior. 28 seconds left to go. 10 point lead for Marion. Free toss up. Off the front of the rim, no good. The ball is up there by Jackson. It is no good, and the ball game is over. The Marion Giants have won their second championship in IHSAA history, 58 to 46 over Ligoti. The, the championship rings are being presented to the Marion Giants as winners of the 1975 IHSA Basketball Championship. Presented by Mr. Ken Miller and Max Mitchell of the Indiana Board of Control. The championship trophy for the 1975 Indiana State High School Basketball Championship won by the Marion Giants right. being presented by Mr. Don Sockle of the IHSA Board of Control. Mr. Ray and It's the final game of the 66th Annual Indiana High School Athletic Association Basketball Tournament. And tonight's final game features the Rushville Lions with a record of 26 and one, their first time in the final four and therefore their first time in the final game. They'll be meeting the Marion Giants who has won two state championships in 1926 and are the defending champs this year. Rushville moved into the final game by defeating East Chicago Washington this afternoon, 68 to 59 after trailing 21 points in the second quarter. And Marion edged Jeffersonville 49 to 47 in what was a very close game. For the Marion Giants, coached by Bill Green, looking for his third state title also, and whose colors are purple and gold, the starting lineup is Dave Colescott, their leading scorer, a 6'1 senior, with a 26.7 average on the year. Also, James Freshwater, a 5'10 junior, Jeff Bragg, a 6'3 junior, Joe Neal, a 6'3 senior, and Tuffy Jackson, a 6'6 senior. Also on the squad, Jess Allenbaugh, a 6'1 junior, Carlton Hayes, a 6'2 junior. Mark Smith, a 6'4 junior. Senior Ray Myers at 6'5. Sophomore Matt Dubuque at 6 feet even. Brad Haskell, who's a 6'6 junior. And 6'5 senior Matt Payne. Dave Colescott, number 21. Off to Freshwater. Jeff Bragg up and in. 2-2. Two -two. Eight point lead for Rushville with 2.23 left, first period. Joe Neal, turnaround jumper, good. Freshwater drives, flips off to Jackson, got it. 15 seconds left in the half. Allen drives, scores, basket count. Freshwater up, no good. Joe Neal up, good. Score tied, 46 all. Bragg up and in, Marion leads. He's got 23 points in the game. He's at the line with a one and one, five seconds left. No good. Rebounded by Cole Scott, puts it up. It is good. Nine baskets for Dave Cole Scott. The game is over. The final score, Marion 82, Rushville 76. And Marion repeats as state champs with only Dave Colescott as a starter from last year's team returning. And it's only the first time, what well, is the first time since 1955-56 with Indianapolis Addicts won two in a row that any team has won two state championships in succession. Okay.
And here, the 1976 Trester Mental Attitude Award winner, Dave Cole Scott of Marion High School. Last year's championship team member, the only senior left this year, Dave Cole Scott, came back with the Marion Giants again in 1976, 50 years after they won the championship for the first time in 1926. And here, Mr. Robert Strait presenting him with the Trester Award, Dave Colescott, one of the truly outstanding basketball players in the state of Indiana, last year and again this year. And here joining Dave at a great family reception, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Jack Colescott with their son, David. Jack is the athletic director at Marion High School coached at Marion High School before Bill Green took over and currently the athletic director and he and Mrs. Cole Scott of course are proud parents of their son David, winner of the 1976 Mental Attitude Award, the Arthur L. Trester Award. And here presenting the championship rings to the Marion Giants IHSA state champions of 1976, Mr. Emerson Muter Spa, North Montgomery and Robert Strait Huntington, Indiana. The Marion Giants winning their third state championship. This one, their second consecutive championship. Back to back last year, 1975. Again this year, 1976. And this is the third championship for Coach Bill Green, who won in Indianapolis, Washington, 1969 came with the Marion Giants last year in 75, and here he is in 1976, reaching a very special rung on a ladder of winning three championships as an Indiana basketball coach. What an honor. And now, presenting the championship trophy to the 1976 Indiana High School champions, Mr. Amzie Miller, Jr. of New Prairie, and presenting this to the members of the Marion Giants, Coach Bill Green, a happy moment for a great team that came back this year with only one returning member from the Varsity Five, starting five of 1975, and that was Dale, Dave Colescott. He carried the banner, the rest of them worked in, another great Indiana State High School champion. Truly number one, they say. You've been watching the final game of the 66th Annual Indiana High School Athletic Association Boys Basketball Tourney, won by the Marion Giants over the Rushville Lions, 82-76, the third state championship for Marion, their second in as many years. Marion finishes the season with a 23-5 record, Rushville 26-2. The 66th Annual... Imagine a six foot three inch man who jumps center for his high school team. Well, that's exactly what James Blackman does. Blackman measures 11 feet six inches on the school rebounding machine and can reach the top of the square on a backboard. Anderson's doing an outstanding job of getting the ball in Troy Lewis's hands. 27 points for Troy. Here's Blackman hitting and scoring with a foul is called on Scott Lewis. Blackman gets it back at the other end. Hillier, you've done a lot of ball games in your career, and a lot of times as you look at this play again, when you build up two players like we have built up Blackman and build up Troy Lewis, they come out and really smell the place up, but these two guys have done a job today. They've been classed throughout their careers, and Troy is only a junior, Blackman a senior, but Blackman is one of the greatest. Timeout's called, 50, 60 to 52 Anderson with 6.13 to play in this ball game. We'll be back at Market Square Arena in just a minute. Correct. Campbell goes and sits down next to uh, head coach Bill Green. And Crabby took the ball in. There's the outside shot by Blackman again. By John Harder. That's two of those we've seen in the last couple of minutes. Both have resulted in field goals. Blackman out front. Time is running out. Blackman, 15 footer. Rims and comes out. Rebounded, put back up and good by Joe Butler. The basket's going to count. The ball against the Anderson Indians. Butler, yes. Oh, oh. Six feet eight inches tall, stepping in now. 
against Steve Johnson at 6-6. The Giants control it. Here's Blackman. And it is still starts to move to the hoop. Well, Marion had a great opportunity. Bill Green's ball club had played exceptionally well in the last minute or so to get that ball back and have a chance to tie. Hilliard? That may be all for David. They've got the basketball. They broke the zone press rather effectively. Butler's got it to Blackman. He wants the shot, of course. It's on its way. Well, he just, Joe, he just, when he gets around a pick, when he can square up, he just has a great, great move to the hoop. Troy Lewis at the yeah. other end got another big one. What a nice shot by that right hand side by Bruce Watson had it taken away a loose ball saved again by Butler inside the love and he scores Butler on the inbound pass so a timeout with 46 seconds to play Anderson's got a four-point lead and they've got the basketball we'll take a look at this uh, situation here at Market Square Arena it's a massive crowd on hand and we'll also take a moment and thank the technical and production crew and directed by Peter Mago. Our unit manager is Mark Emmons. Our network coordinator, Dean McDowell. Slow motion replay operators today, Dick Blair and Andy Dietrich. Video by Jim Miller, Al Engel, and Mike Metter. Audio by Fred Lawrence and Eddie Swanson. The, the bug of some sort, and we wish them well and hope that they will be with us again in our next telecast very soon. By the way, I respond to a 31-0 record in the state championship. Big free throws. Got the roll to James Blackman. Now he has 38. Well, it's been a great matchup. 38 points each for Blackman and for Lewis. Another good roll. Now Marion's got to go into Marion's got to go into full court pressure with 32 seconds remaining. They're down by three. It's 75 to two to make a steal. Here is Blackman and he got it. Now it's a three on one to the other end. Up with a shot and good and a big play by David Jackson. Jackson now with 11. 16 seconds. 15 seconds. 77, 74. Blackman, yes. Blackman with another field goal. A timeout by Maria. Joe, there's one important thing, and I, I, I don't think we'll have a chance to see it again. When Blackman made the steal down here, the defensive man for Anderson did one of the smartest things he could have done. He got out of the way. <laughs> There was no way in the road he's going to stop Blackman, and they're only down by three at that time. Right, a three-point right. play when it could have tied the score. Absolutely. What a tremendous effort by James Blackman. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He has eight field goals in this period. 19 points in the quarter. Hilliard, I show him with 43. How about well, now? Troy Lewis has the ball. Now, he gets turned around right here, see? And then he didn't know that uh, James was right there waiting. But there's a, there's a chance. Out. Yeah. You can almost see him, Joe, saying, whoa, maybe yeah. maybe I better not. That's right. Bounce from out of bounds from Harder. John Harder will toss it in. They try to go to Troy. They better hurry. They just try to throw it up court and throw it to Marion. Seven seconds. Six seconds. Blackman is fouled and will go to the free throw line with four seconds to play. Joe, let's just reset it and then you analyze it as we look into the Marion Giants huddle. Marion had the, uh, Anderson had the basketball with a score 77 to 76, their favor. They could not get the ball in thanks to some tremendous pressure on their part. Let's go to the Marion huddle right now. Yes, what he's saying is, first of all, James, you make the two free throws. <laughs> we got to start, we have to start there, okay? Secondly, he doesn't want him to let him throw the pa pass uh, at, to midcourt or pass. He wants to make him throw a short pass because they have four seconds. And if we have, as we have seen, Anderson can score very quickly, and four is a lot of time for them. Blackman is perfect from the strike so far today at three for three. That's a big one right there. Here's the big one. You're going to get a chance to think about it again. Anderson calls timeout. James 70. Blackman now has 44 points. Well, it's 77 to 77 with, as you mentioned, Jerry, four seconds to go. It would be Troy Lewis. <laughs> four seconds remain. And here's the free throw by Blackman that can give Mary in the lead. He didn't get it. The rebound is up and no good. And we're going to go to overtime. 
He missed the free throw shot with four seconds to play. And just what you said about Basil Mummy winning overtime, he got it. Bill Green, the head coach of the Giants, doing the same thing on the other bench. Now we're down to 40 seconds to play. Tie ball game at 77. We're in overtime. Marion lost a six-point lead. Anderson lost an 11-point lead. They come to Blackman. Now we're down to 28 seconds to play. And obviously, they're going to go for the final shot. Blackman, 13-footer, yes! <laughs> they went for the, whatever he felt like he could make one. <laughs> he took it down to about 22 or 3 seconds and got it away. Now Anderson's got it. They've got a timeout if they want it. Inside to Troy Lewis. Lewis starts to move right side. He is bumped. He is fouled. 79, 79. Joe, I remember you and I chatting amongst ourselves, and we said, what in the world could we do? That would be better than last year's games. <laughs> right. Well, maybe we found the way. We're going to sneak a camera in across the way and look into the huddle of the Marion Giants and see if we can get some idea what Bill Green might be thinking over there. And boy, I guarantee you, those wheels are really cranked on a mile a minute in both those huddles and Anderson added Marion. We trap. We need to get. Okay, let's get the trap organized. James will be out in front on the trap. Joe's on the wing. Okay. Bruce, you're man to man on Lewis. Okay. So tight, Bruce. Tinkle, you're I think we have to give the Anderson gang a lot of credit there. With seven seconds left, they used their 2-2-1 three-quarter court pressure, and Marion was not able to get a shot up. They put a lot of pressure on James when he was bringing the ball up the floor. Tied at 77 at the end of regulation. 79-79 all at the end of the first overtime. Now it is 81-79, and Troy Lewis had it taken away, and a good defensive play. Here's Blackman one-on-one -on, -one on Scott Lewis, and he got it. Oh, my. Blackman's got the rebound. Four-point lead for the Anderson Indians. Blackman takes it in in front of the green shirts and hits it. Blackman has scored every point in overtime for the Marion Giants. Two in the first overtime. Now all four of the second overtime points. Anderson Indians, two attempts, and that is important. Scott Lewis will go up there. He uh, missed behind. Well, uh, they still Bull. got it. 18 <laughs> seconds to play. Will there be three overtimes for crying out loud? Blackman baseline. Yes, sir. Blackman with six points in this overtime session. Down to seven. Down to six. On the right side. There's the shot that's up and no good. And picked up and put up and good at the buzzer. It counts. The basket is good by David Jackson. At the buzzer, the rebound by Jackson is up. And it is good. And in double overtime, Anderson has beaten Marion 89 to 87. Absolutely an unbelievable situation. And let's take a look at this. Marion Giants is going to join me, and we're going to show you an even better performance. And that was by a young man that Bill Green thinks size for size, pound for pound, inch for inch is the greatest basketball player he's ever coached. And that would be James Blackman. 52 points, uh, Bill. That has to be tremendous. Let's look at the tape now and call it off. Okay, how are you? Well, first of all, James is an instant offense. He's got a great rhythm. He has a great arm follow-through. If you see his arms are up in the air, we say 12 or 1 o'clock at all times. He knows the backboard real well. He now, he'll, he'll bring the ball down now. 27, 24 out of 47 shots, better than 50% today. Well, he's shooting 51% for the career of four years of Marion High School, which is great. And you'll notice he jumps straight up. And I think the thing it does is people don't realize he gets way up into the air, and uh, it's just hard to block the shot. He also makes a marvelous defensive play late in this tape. Well, James had six of steals this afternoon, 52 points, three assists. No, you just can't ask any more out of a young man. Well, he's an outstanding young man, and he does everything for you. He has marvelous tempo. I think he has amazing extension and great tempo. Yes, he really does. And like we said before, his rhythm, he, he just does it so easy. Uh, Look at that shot. Right we call that a one-wing butterfly. <laughs> now, here's his steal, I think, right. Yes. And here's his slam dunk. So that tells you how he's 6'3", and then he just jumps tremendous. Here's that steal again, and we're going to so, uh, show the dunk in slow motion. Right. Bill. 
and he gets up. James can touch the top of the of the square on the backboard, and we just real we're going to miss him a lot of Mary. Well, I congratulate you on a great season, and you brought two of your great athletes, yeah. and I congratulate you again, Bill. Great working with you, and I'm sure you'll be back. Thank there. you, Hillier. Good luck to you, Bill. Okay. Here is James Blackman, the young man that got 52 points. He made uh, 24 out of 47 field goal attempts this afternoon. Jim, I know you'd like to have a victory here this afternoon, but what is your feeling about the ball game? Are you tired? Yeah, I'm feeling tired, but we ain't got nothing to be ashamed of. We went out there and we just got beat by a good team. Uh, were you aware of the fact how many points you were making? No, I was just trying to put him in. You know, it was getting a close game and the shot was there. I was just trying to put him in. Do you know that George Gervin of San Antonio scored 55 points on this court? You have 52. That's the second greatest number of points ever scored in this basketball court. Well, that's a great honor, you know, but I'd like to thank all the Marion fans that's coming out and support us like they did. Well, James, I'm sure uh, you'd like to have Cole, Mr. Basketballs here uh, for the All-Star game. I wonder if that could happen. Well, if it happened, it'd be great, but Steve Alford, he's also a good player. I have a lot of respect for his play, so if he get Mr. Basketball, you know, that's just given to another great player. I just, you know, he's a, he got good talent. Congratulations. Good luck at Kentucky. Thanks a lot. Jay Teagle. The Giants get the break. There's Teagle. Slam. 46 to 30. Mowry at 13, 12, 10. In second, wide open. Lions still shooting over 50% from the field. They're 26 of 51 at this point. Alley Good play. Alley oh, yeah. Play. Edward. Very ball. One second. Shows out. It's history. No good. Final yep. score. And the celebration begins. The Marion Giants now number one Andrew. in the state. have won their 23rd straight game. And they're going on to the regional. 83 to 55. The Marion Giants had defeated a strong challenge by the Madison Grand Argyles. They just didn't have enough to stay with the Giants after the first half. Marion Giants, the 1985 sectional champions, will go on next week as they'll try for the 11th consecutive regional championship. And that's a hard record to try to top when you look at the past 11 years, what the Giants have done. The Marion Giants. Jones down with eight, and Belmont takes a 10 to 8 lead. Here come the Giants. They're going to run. There's Derek Keyes. Stops back out to Mallory. To Jones. Jones drives free throw lane shot. Up. No good. Rebound. Derek Keyes. Turn around 10 footer. He got it. We're tied at 10. Derek up and down a lot. Come the Giants. A minute 11 to go in the first quarter. They lead by three. Mallory's going to take it. The inside lost the ball. Still. Oh, good dribbling. Jonathan per Persinger got it. Kyle Persinger with a shot. A little farther back now. Across 10 second line, stole away by Jones. He's going to take it from there. Good. Scorecard to keep up with Belmont as fast as they come in and out. They're really turnover. Picked right away by Landon Jones. He's taking it in. Right oh, away. Good move. 25 to 7. Here. Ball Bowen's back up with it. Well, this is a fast game. Pull away. Stolen away by Mowry. He laid it in. Yeah. 29 to 23. 31 25. And to Lyndon Jones, three minutes to go. Bowens with a fake there, laid it in. 33 25, holding that eight point lead. All the way under by Williams, he can get too hard. Mowry way down on a breakaway. He's going to hold it up. Giants with that 10 point lead, going to take one shot. Smart Over move by Nicky. 40 seconds to go. You go in with a 12 point lead or a 10 point lead here. Mowry with it, over to Persinger, back out to Jones. 33 seconds to go in the second quarter. Belmont's still in that tight man-to-man -man defense. And it's pretty tight one, too. They guard pretty close. I think Bill Green's got to be happy with this first half of the Giants. I think so. They increased their lead, and Tigger was on the bench. 17 seconds. They talk about a weak bench, but so far they've come through. That's right. That's why the Giants are 24-0 and ranked number one in the state. Eight seconds, seven. Jones is going to take it from right there. Hit it. Got it. 40 to 28. Three, Three seconds. Two. He won't even get it off. 40 to 28. The end of the second quarter. Hope you're enjoying the nice broadcast. We'll be back with second half action in just a moment. Turn over. All the way by Ganellis. Praise down quick. He's going to up. It's blocked by Keys. Great block. Quarter 33 with 5.33 to go in the third quarter. We got a trap. Nicky Mowry has the ball out front. Jones down on the baseline. Up. Good move. 
No good. Rebound. Tipped around. Jay Edwards. No good. Tipped up by Teagle. No good. Up by Teagle. And it's good. Got it. That counts. They battled that time. Bias hit the boards, and they've got a 13-point lead, and the Marion crowd is on their feet. Welcome back to the lineup, Jay Teagle, in the second half. He's in the lineup anyway. Jay Edwards throws it in to Mallory. Alley oop. game with 4.03 to play. Full court press. They break it again. Here comes Bowen. Stop. There's Keyes. Goes slam dunk. Oh, yeah. There, Keyes took it in. And the Giants are back up. Mallory walks it up. Bill Green down on one knee looking the situation over. Three ten to go. The Giants, the clock is their ally right now. Bowen's back out to Mallory. Three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Back out to Mallory. Inside to Bowens. Bowens has trouble. Stripped away. No call. Mallory picks it up. Mark Mixler Mallory. out on the floor. Back to Edwards underneath to Jones. Fakes good move. Lays it up and scores. Lyndon Jones tonight. You notice, how, you notice how Marion worked the ball? He's put on a scoring spree tonight. Here comes Lyndon Jones. Giants break the press again. Teagle. Short rebound. Belmont. Minute 50. It's all over Mallory. There it is. Lays up, scores. Nicky Mallory. Another turnover by Belmont. Nicky Mallory might just have iced it for the Giants. They had a chance to cut it down to six. Belmont did, but Mallory coming there, the spark plug, and puts the Giants back up ten with a minute to four, minute forty to play. Paul Vogel with four points. It's a seven-point ball game. Here comes Jones. Go take it in. He scores. Lyndon Jones now has thirty. Lyndon Jones five-point lead. 17 seconds. Canellas inside. Stole away by the. Stole away by Mallory. Lyndon Jones. Here we go. Kadir Keys slam dunk. We're going to Fort Wayne. We're going to Fort Wayne with the Marion Giants with a seven-point lead. And there it is. And the Marion Giants have won the 1985 Marion Regional by a score of 87 to 78. The Marion Giants are now 25 and 0. They go on to Fort Wayne as they've tied a record for the 11th straight regional championship. Any thoughts about it? Oh yeah, we Marion has always been successful to go to Fort Wayne, so you know that we just came out and played hard and make sure that we go there again. I noticed, I've noticed all season long, it seems like when the Giants have really needed a basket, you've been able to take it inside. I know it's kind of rough in there tonight. Any thoughts about an inside game tonight? Oh yeah, you know, Kip Jones is a very good player. You know, he kind of intimidated me for a little while, but you know, Lyndon Jones just played an outstanding game and helped everybody else because they knew that if the ball was in my hand, I was going to take it to the hole. Very good ball. Your uh, We're trying to get companion there really had an outstanding ball game. Any thoughts about the way Lyndon helped you out tonight? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, last night, Lyndon, um, he didn't play very well, and, uh, you know, he was down. So he came out tonight, you know, to, you know, he really didn't have anything to prove. We knew he could play, and he just came out tonight and done his job. I'm looking um, forward to, you know, it's a dream come true. You know, it's, I'm just happy we're going, and I'm looking forward to playing down there in Market Square. Seems like it's Market Square all week. It's all spent on my mind. I'm ready to play. Going out there and play ball, that's all. Oh, he's been a great coach, you know. He's taught me a lot of things in my sophomore year, and hopefully if he's still here in the next two years, he'll teach me more, you know. I'd like to win it for him, too, you know. I know you had a little problem Saturday night after the ball game. Are you doing all right now? Yes, I'm fine. I had a stomach ache from eating too much pizza and in between games, you know, but I'm all right now. Well, we're looking Yes, I'm looking forward to it. I hope I play a good game. Seems like a good night. All right, thank you. Ball games? I'm really looking forward to it. You know, it's, it's always a dream to go back for the first time, but yet going back the second time in your high school career, it just it kind of adds the sugar on top of everything. Does it feel any different this time than it did two years ago? Yeah, I think so. I think it means a little bit more to me this year cause, just because it's my last year of playing. And, I, you know, I really want to go down and really just give it my all to win it. You bet. This is what it's all about. You know, everybody... Everybody dreams of a state championship, and we got the caliber of a team, and we got the team to do it. So hopefully, we can go down to. I don't, you know, that's uh, basketball means a lot to me, and the Marion, putting on that Marion Giant uniform means a lot to me. But I don't, you know, that, I don't think that's mo the most important thing in my life. You know, I think my relationship with God has got to be the most important thing, and and basketball means a lot, and a lot of people don't know what it's, what it means to put on the Marion Giant uniform. But yet, I think it, you know, my relationship with God means a lot more important. Is that?
Well, I think we are. We've prepared very well this week. We had a real good practice on Tuesday and Wednesday and slacked off a little bit on Thursday and Friday. And uh, uh, we're going to hope that the kids have got some more, like two more games in them. And if we can do that, we feel that uh, it's going to take a good team to beat us. And we're just going to try to do the things we can do and play the best we can and hope that's good enough. What about that? No, I really haven't. This team has handled more pressure and uh, better than any team I've ever had. These kids have gone to the well so many times this year and always come out with water. They've always won the game. And we just hope the well doesn't go dry Saturday. But uh, no matter what happens, this team has to go down in the in history of Marion basketball as one of the courageous teams because of the really tough schedule and the way they've handled it uh, with extremely young kids. I know you're very well. It would be nice if I could get the fourth ring, but it would be much better for this team, and, and I'd be much happier for this team because it's their first time down, and it would just give me a big thrill to see the, the faces and the smiles and knowing that they have achieved something that nobody else in Indiana did in 85. We want to congratulate you and look forward to a lot of Purple Rain Saturday. Thank you. Rebounded by Marion's Jay Edwards. Takes it all the way in. Nobody shot off the middle on him, and the big guy just knocked it home. Now we're inside two minutes. Bill Green said that somebody in a white shirt touched it. I don't think so, Bill. <laughs> He's still coaching hard, isn't he? 50 years of age. Married. He and his wife, Mary Ann, the parents of Kevin, who's 26, Mike, 23, Ellen, 21, and Larry, 19. You know they're proud of that. John Brown. 16 points, eight of which have come here in this fourth session. 119 to play. At the other end, Nicky Mallory with his eight point and his first bucket here in the second half. 110 to go in this contest. We can almost start celebrating in Marion because it's almost there. Graf almost made a great rebound. He finally does. And Todd has 20 points so far. There's another lad I'm very impressed with. Yes, I am too. You're a good point. Inside a minute. Marion with a lead at 71 63. Now a little keep away, perhaps. Nicky Mallory being chased by his counterpart, wearing 22, Devin Johnson. 42 seconds in this basketball game. And the Marion cheering section right behind us, the two hour left, begins to really come a part of the scene. 30 seconds away from the Marion's Giants fourth state championship. Here is a foul. Right at the mid-court stripe. It'll be on Dennis Williams, number one on him. We will stick around after the game for the presentation of the awards, time permitting. Hopefully we'll have time for the Prester Award winner. Speaking of uh, that, we have one between us here. Yes, no we do. Here. Prester Award winner, Mr. Basketball, went all the way to the state finals at Arsenal Technical High School, and we're very proud of him. What a job he did this year with the but second half. He has nine points so far in this game, and Jay's played in pain throughout much of this day. Now we're down to 10 seconds. Layup is good, and the crowd starts to count it. celebration begins. The Marion Giants have just picked up their fourth state championship. And they did it in impressive, convincing fashion with a 74-67 win. Let's listen in just briefly here. The Giants are indeed number one at Market Square Arena. The purple and gold reigns supreme. Final score, 74-67. Stay with us. We'll return to Market Square Arena and enjoy some of the post-game celebration. One of your network sponsors. Nicky Mallory, here he comes, walking out with the state championship trophy. The crowd of 7,500 plus rise to occasion. Everyone's on their feet, Greg. Right? 
proud moment in Marion High School basketball history as they salute the 1985 state champion Marion Giants. <laughs> Here's the coach, the one that has four state championships to his credit, looking for number five this year. Another standing ovation from the sellout crowd at the Athletic Arena. On behalf of Marion Community School, Marion High School, the entire community and the support of our loyal friends, I accept this simple protection. One closing word, 85 is so much fun. Let's do it again! <laughs> I think he got about 7,500 <laughs> amen to that. <laughs> and state champ, 1985. Turnover now. Stolen away there by Persinger. He's going to take it in. Slam dunk. Two-handed dunk. Yeah, seven to four. The dunk meter goes up to six already early in the season. Corner. No good. Rebound. Jay Edwards. Here come the Giants. They're going to run. They've got the numbers. Three on two. Jay lays it up, and he's scored. Jay Edwards did it all. Pulled down the rebound. Took it down and scored, and Jay now has 20. Good move by Edwards. Five and a half to play. Edwards Stole the scale. Away. He's got a two-on-one break. Jay Edwards slams. Oh. oh, yeah. And the Giants are up by 13. 3.25 to play. Giants, one of the biggest leads at 15. There's Spurgeon with a steal. Away by Spurgeon. Still picks it up. He's got there's Linden, and Linden lays it in. Good shot there by Giants Linden Giants are now up 17. That's Pershinger down fast. 76-54. Huddleston tries to score. Oh, what a roll. Yes, he got it. Oh, what a shot. Long Full pass court. going away, and there's the ball game. Marion Giants had defeated the Norwell Knights 85 to 56, led by Jay Edwards with 26, Lyndon Jones with 19. Up against a one-man press, breaks into the forecourt over to the side. Jay Edwards, 18-footer, and he around the rim and it yes yeah, falls in. That's what you call the shooter's touch. Off the key, there's Derek Keys. Back to Jay Edwards, 15-footer in the air, and he got another one. Jay Edwards with the shot, no good. Lyndon Jones, the rebound, puts his shot up, and it's good. Eight seconds, okay, let's move it. There goes Kevin, shot is up, and it's good. All right, three seconds, 35, 31. Call, close. Lyndon works it around, Key sets a pick, Lyndon drives the baseline, stop, 10-footer in the air, short rebound, tipped up and in, no. Rebound, Lyndon, trapped to the ball, Ewer throws it up, no good, Jay Edwards, no good. Rebound up, and Jay Edwards, no Lyndon Jones, there's Eric Ewer, lays up, and he scores. No basket. Got a charging. I mean, is that on Eric now, Ray? And Eric's That's four. Eric's down. He's hurt. He's grabbing his ankle. Marion's got two guys and four fouls now, Eric. Number 50, Jim Alderman, slow getting up for Lawrence North. Those are big men, Keys and Ewer. And four some fouls. papers come flying out on the court. The fans not like that call. Eric having trouble getting up. Looks like his ankle is giving him a little bit of problem. Edwards, 10-footer in the air. No good, tipped up in. And Kyle Persinger tips it in. The Giants are up a four. Virgin, a Good pass. Kyle Persinger. T. Edwards. Virgin, Kyle Persinger. Oh, great pass. Great pass. Six seconds. Where's the ball at? <laughs> well, there it is. And no, there, damn, there's the ball game. And that's the, that's the final score. Very tight, 78, Lawrence North, 61. Up a rider, 48, 30. Down quickly, Derek Keyes. Slam it. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. He's number 14 on the dunker meter. That gets the crowd up, and the Giants are back up 16 with 640 to play. A long time. Jay Edwards, down with the ball. Back out to Linden. Giants don't have to be in any hurry right now. They have a 12 point Derek lead. Derek Keys! Oh, yes, sir! Oh, yes, sir! Oh, yes, sir! Robbie Morrell back to Lyndon Jones. Tipped down away. Down. Giants Fort don't Wagle. have to be in any hurry right now. Fort Wayne down quickly. There goes the drive. No Knocked good. away. Robbie Morrell, the next to the play. Breaks the press. Knocked, Knocked away. away.
into Lyndon Jones. Giants off of that pass, Alley Oaks lay up! Goes to 22, and the Giants are tied at the four. There's Hayes. A good rebound. Derek Keyes. Here comes the Giants. Kyle Persinger into the forecourt, and they're going to slow it up. Back to Lyndon Jones. Look at the looking for Jay Edwards. Jay Edwards has the ball. That was Hayes' second miss of the night. There's Lyndon Jones. He's going to stop. 16-footer in the air, and he got it. Lyndon Jones puts the Giants on top, six to four. So the Giants have got the crowd into the ball game in a hurry. Here comes Newcastle. Thurman back out to Haynes. Haynes looking inside. We go back out. Cross court to Cody. Cody inside in the lane. Good block. Oh, Lyndon Jones has a breakaway. I don't know if he can catch it on. Slam! Oh, 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 yes, sir! There's two of them tonight. The Giants lead 8-4. to four. Lyndon Jones says it. Newcastle wants a timeout. Giants. We're down to 11 seconds. Here's Derek Keyes. Back out top, Jay Edwards. Jay's going to take the 18-footer. It's in the air. He got it. Nothing but net. Jay Edwards, Giants on top, 16th well with two seconds. Three-quarter court shot and scored and there's the end of the first quarter. Good ball club. I'm surprised, I'm, well, I'm surprised how well they've hit the boards for no bigger than they are. Well, coach was concerned about the rebounding. He said they were good. Knocked away from Scott Edwards. Oh, 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 oh. 21-29. Man, and he's fouled. Oh, Giants are trailing by two. Alley-oop. And it's too high. Man, there he goes. Jay Edwards down quickly. Pulls up, takes a shot, and yes, sure. Tied up, 47, 47. That's what we need. Jay Edwards has 19. Pull to Persinger. Double teamed. He's, he needs help. Jay Edwards, Jay two Edwards. runs. Down, Dyke. High. Yes, high. High. That's the way. Oh, yes, sir. 67. Come on, Jenna. Giants up by three. The third meter goes for 24. I think you call that a high percentage shot. That's what they need. 32 seconds. That's no foul. Let that clock run. Good, Good shot. 64, 61. Let her run. There you go, Jake. Got an Edwards hand. Over. 10 first finger. Eight. Giants are going to win it. Down to Jones. The first finger. Up. And it's over. That's good. Two seconds. Five water. Water. 66, 69. And one. Five points. Marion wins. 66, 61. And one of the most exciting games that we've had a pleasure to bring here on the Axe Network. Right down the wire it went, and it was three shows that won the game for the Giants. There's Sands over to there. There's Fox. He's going to take the 14-footer, and he missed it. Rebound. Warsaw up. Blocked away by Keys. Rebound Giants. Kyle Fersker to Kevin Spurgeon. Giants with a four-on-two break. Lyndon Jones, 10-footer. Got it. Jay Edwards with the shot. No good. Kip up. No good. Jones. Oh, yes, sir. It's good. Good. Good basket good. by Lyndon oh. Jones. And he's fouled. And the crowd didn't like that call. Well, I think the crowd thinks that Lyndon might have went over the Warsaw players' back to get that rebound, but it was just good position by Lyndon, and the Giants are up by three. 20 to 17, Marion. This is going to be a very big possession. We're down just over five minutes. And Warsaw has a three-point lead, and the Giants are putting on a four-court press. Crowd standing up now. Long pass over to Fox. Down low, O'Connor. And it's good. 42-37, Warsaw. Up to five. 457 to own the ball game. Lyndon Jones, down low. And Got it's good. 42-39, Mary. What a big bucket. Big basket by Lyndon. He now has 13. That quiets the crowd. That's what the Giants need. The Giants press it all over. Right over. Let Jay Edwards got a foul, foul on him. Hand. Down low. That's Bear with the ball. He's gone. Oh, I'm gonna, almost oh, five held it for five seconds. No oh. call. Oh, Inside. Up and good. 45-39, Warsaw. John O'Connor with a big basket to six-point. Warsaw lead with three minutes to play. Lyndon Jones with the ball. Going to find out what the Giants are made of right now. Jay Edwards with a shot. Got it. Good. Oh, yeah. Jay Edwards with Mary wants a timeout, but the referee didn't see it. Giants still pressing. 45-41, Warsaw. Having trouble getting across. We're going to have a blocking foul on and Mary. Kyle Persinger is out of the ball game. That's foul number five. Minute 28 to go. The Giants are going to pull off, have to pull off a miracle if they're going to continue that streak. Second shot. Here's the bonus. And it's good. 50 to 44, Warsaw. Minute 27. Jay Edwards with a shot. 
It's good. good. 16, it's 46. 46. Minute 19 to go. Back up that six-point lead, 52-46. Lyndon Jones down quickly. Minute 10 seconds. Foul on Jay Edwards. Oh, I don't believe that call. Got a push off on Jay Edwards. You can see that like that Foul on Jay Edwards, that's number four. Warsaw played in with a minute 10 to go. They'll have the press put on by Marion. Comes a double team. Knocked, Knocked away. Marion's ball. ball. Marion's ball, okay. Let's go. Let's go, Jay. One minute. Down quickly, Jay Edwards takes the shot. shot. It's good. What a shot, all right. Looks like it was foul here. Warsaw. Four Under point. a ball game. Under a minute now. 47 seconds. Got to have a turnover or a foul. There he fouled him. They got Mary get, throws it in. Get Jay Edwards got the ball. He dribbles. Looking for the shot. It's up. It's no, no good. good. Rebound. Rebound. It is no good. Jay Edwards. Basket. Jay wants a timeout. Jay wants a timeout. It's 53-52. <laughs> Marion's got a timeout. Oh, brother. 12, 12 seconds. seconds. <laughs> 53-52 Warsaw. He gets two shots. We need him to miss one of them. I think Lyndon Jones I'd like to have it. overtime. Right down here somewhere. First shot is up. It's good. 54. This is a big one right here. 54, 52, Warsaw. Here's your ball game. If he hits it, it's over. The second shot. We need a miss. It's up. It's short. That it's is good. 55, That's 52. That's the ball game right there. Warsaw. Two, one, a shot. That's the ball over. game. Warsaw has upset the Marion Giants. Warsaw has just upset the Marion Giants, ending a 40-game win streak. Well, 55-52, the Tigers have pulled off what 40 other teams could not do. They've knocked off the number one ranked and number two in the nation, Marion Giants. Al Rhodes, coach of the Warsaw Tigers, has just upset the Marion Giants. 55-52 is the final. And it's celebration time in Warsaw as they've pulled off the game they've wanted. Well, gentlemen, 55-52, three-point Warsaw win. Well, that was a long string, and the Marion Giants certainly have nothing to be ashamed of. 40 wins. They still have the second longest winning streak in the history of Indiana high school basketball. And when you look back over the past 60, 70 years, that's nothing to hang your heads about. And the Giants, you've got to keep in mind, even though they got beat tonight, the main goal is to win the state championship. It's not how many games you can win in a row, which is nice to have the record, but what really counts is who's number one come March. Over to Lyndon Jones, looking inside. Lyndon back out to Derek Keyes. Derek's going to drive, lays it up, and he scores. He'll tie it at two. Derek good move. Keyes. Good move, Derek. A good move in a basket, two to two. Over to Beaver. Bad pass. Lyndon Jones intercepts, down quickly. Puts it up, and good. 17-15, Marion. Back out to Heron. And it intercepted by Jay Edwards, down quickly. Oh, right off the left. It. Beaver, down quickly, puts it up. No what a play by Edwards. Edwards. Down low. There it goes. Slam out and get high. Oh, yes, Marion ball. Oh, I believe Derek just a little bit too far underneath the basket for that one. Lafayette's going to set up a play. Get into the forecourt. There's Mark Jewell. Back almost knocked away by Spurgeon. It's loose. Then it goes. Here's Jay Edwards. He's all over. Get ready. Slam knock. And the Giants lead by two, 44 to 42. Well, you saw that one coming. That put the Giants in the lead. The dunker meter just went to number 25. We're down to 38 seconds. Lafayette down by two, working inside. Still working. Here's Island. Good fake. Lays up and blocked away by Derek Keyes. Here's Derek with the basketball. Still Lyndon Jones. They can't get a handle on it. We're down to 25 seconds to go, 44-42. Giants may be going for one. Capacity crowd on hand. They love every moment of it. The Giants with a two-point lead in the ball. Lyndon Jones way out top. We're down to 14 seconds. Giants going for the last shot. The coaching staff of Giants yelling instructions. Lyndon Jones going to drive with seven seconds. 50 footers is no good rebound. It's loose. Mark Jewell picks it up for life. Still a little white cross. Up and no good rebound. Jewell once again moves into the third quarter. And oh, man, what a lot of action right there. And the third quarter comes to the end with the score of the Marion Giants, 44. The Lafayette Jeff Broncos, 42. We've got eight minutes of exciting basketball coming up. Giants trying to make another comeback, Adam. Jay Edwards, it's up. 
No good. Rebound, Spurgeon. What a rebound. Edwards is good. Tremendous rebound by Kevin Spurgeon, one of the shortest men in the court. 53-50, Lafayette. Jules got 14 for... Over to Persinger, down low to Keys. Up, good. Great shot by Derrick. 58-55, Marion. 2.47 left in this ball game. Edwards First shot. Jewel out there this time. It's up. No good. Rebound. Hey, Keys. Jay Edwards and Lyndon Jones. Lyndon Jones will bring the ball down. Everybody on their feet now. Jay Edwards with the ball. Let's look for a good shot, boys. Lyndon Jones. His shot is up. It's oh, good. Yeah, it's, it counts. it's good. And what a shot. 143 to go. It's tied up. 60-60. And we may have a foul. Second shot is up. It's good. 65-60 Marion. 29 seconds. Lafayette down quickly with the shot. No good. Rebound. Oh, Lyndon Jones. Lyndon Jones up. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. The Giants are going to win the ball game. Yeah. Lafayette throws the ball away. Oh, yeah. That brought the crowd of 7,700 to the feet of the Giants. Duck a meter and another win. Duck a meter 26 now. 16 seconds to go in the ball game. Giants leading 67 68. Jewel. Four seconds. Three, two. Shot is up. It's good. 69 64. Marion. The Marion Giants. The 15 footer, and he got it. Jay Edwards, two for two in the second half, has 14. The Giants back up a six. Just over five minutes to go to third quarter. There's Persinger wide open. He got it. Nice. Looks like they're good. again. Rebound, rebound. Persinger rebound. up and good. That's his third offensive rebound. He's converted to a bucket. Gonna hold it up. Back to Kyle Persinger. We're down to a minute 20 to go to third quarter. Jay Edwards hasn't shot in a while. Takes it, and he got it. Jay Edwards now has 16 points. The Giants have their biggest lead at eight with a minute 12 to go to third quarter. The 10 footer up there, no good rebound. North will put the ball. We're down to five seconds. Pass in the fourth quarter. There's Jones. He's going to drive. Two seconds. Pass underneath. Lays it up, up and scores. And there's the end of the third quarter. So Moore gets the bucket, and North cuts that giant lead to five. Nice. And Jones. Inside, Eric Ewer up and scores. The basket's good, and he's fouled. Eric Ewer now has six points. He's going to go to the free throw line. Giants will play it in. Lyndon Jones back to Jay Edwards, 15-footer, and he got it. Jay Edwards now has 13 points. Up to Jay Edwards. Back to Derek Keyes. He's going to drive the lane. Lays that slam. Oh, oh, what a move by Derek Keyes. Tremendous and, move. And they called an offensive foul. Me either. I don't know where that guy come from under there. Well, Coach Green's going to get his money's worth right now as Derek Keyes made an NBA move to the hoop. He got a slam dunk, but the referee called him for charging. And a crowd of about 5,500 Marion Giant fans does not like that call. Oh, player. Logan Sport putting on a little bit of a press. Lyndon having some trouble with the basketball. Finally breaks that press. Over to Kyle Persinger. Back across to Lyndon Jones. He's going to stop. Take the 12-footer, and he got it. Good move, good pass by Lyndon Jones. He now has 15 points. The Giants are up by seven. First year, number 25, that's his second. The Giant coaching staff hollering instructions down there at 68 65. They seem to be pointing at something right now. Green wants somebody to come down there. The guys within one would get a timeout. On top, Kyle Persinger. He'll drive, take the 17 footer, and it's good. Wow. They don't want to take the tennis shoes off yet. There's Persinger. Jan Wood. Oh, and it now gets up the good. All right, Persinger, and he fouled. Basket's good. Two and a half minutes to decide who goes to Fort Wayne. 47 46, Marion. Persinger. Jay Edwards, he drives, shoots, and it's yes, good. Sir. Nope. Huntington with the ball with 2.15 to go in this ball game. Going right down to the wire. Very big possession right here. Knocked Stole away. away there it goes. Persinger, it's up. And it's oh, yeah. score. 51-46, Marion. 51-48, Marion. Minute 36 to go. Giants do need to be in a hurry here. Marion does not have to shoot the ball, but they can. Jay Edwards. And yes, sir. 53-48, Marion. They want the ball. Underneath. Shot is up. Ball. What a ball. The ball. What a play. And it's yes, sir. Get down quickly. They got 19 seconds. They need to 18. press him. They're going to run out of time if they don't shoot it. Shot is up. No good. Kicked around with Paul. No good. Knocked around. Back up. 
shot is good. 55 quick. Oh, we got a one point game. They didn't even need to take it out. Kyle Persinger, six foot four junior, has a ball game in his hands right now. First shot is up. And he, he got, got it. Shot. Oh, yes, one more. sir. One more, and we're on to Fort Wayne if he can get this one. This place Wait. is going to erupt if he hits it. Three seconds, still a lot of time. All the Giants are leaving the line and coming down the floor. Here she goes. They got to cut off this shot. Put her up. We're going to Fort Wayne. We're right. going to Fort Wayne. Get oh, ready. Wayne. Fort Wayne is going. All right. All right. Up. The Giants are done. Giants win the championship game in the regional. What a ball game. 57 to 54, so you can get ready next Saturday morning to head up I-69 to the Fort Wayne Coliseum because the Marion Giants, for the 12th consecutive year, a new state record, will be there to play. Great. Right there are your 1986 Marion Regional Champions, the Giants, 57 to 54. He doesn't miss it all. Eric Ewers misses the shot. Loveless rebound. Knocked out of his hands. Picked up. A jump ball is going to be called, apparently. There's the Marion bench, as you see uh, Bill Green and his assistants, Samuel Weissong and Ray Sims there. Gary Keyes, Lyndon Jones, angle, shot, yes! Now for Michigan City Rogers, Lyndon Jones dribbling baseline, shoots it, scores, solo play for Lyndon Jones, 62 to 56. Now the full court, Gales driving, jumping, shooting, missing it. He is the rebound to Lyndon Jones. Lyndon driving. He goes in. He scores. So the full court game is working for the Giants. And it's 62 to 58. Front shot banking up. Missing the shot. Rebound is to Jay Edwards. Edwards bounce passing to Lyndon Jones. He scores. He has 12 in this period. 27 for the game. And time is being called by Michigan City Rogers to score. Rogers 62. And Marion 60. We'll be back. In a moment. Here he gets it. Score tied at 64. First time it was tied since 2-2. Two to two. Kraft jumps it, banks it up, he scores. Mike Kraft, the senior. Mike Kraft. Lyndon Jones is crowded. He jumps it, he shoots it, he overshot it. Rebound. Jay Edwards, he jumps, he banks it up, he scores. Jay Edwards ties the game at 82-82, 40 seconds to go. Mike Lemons, 18-17. Paul Drake, they'll wind it down for the last shot, apparently. They're going to press. Well, intercepted. Persinger coming down. He ends up. Edwards shoots and misses. Rebound is blocked, and the whistles are blowing at a foul. Kyle Persinger got the rebound with three seconds to go. It's in the hands now of junior Kyle Persinger. He shoots it. He scores it. Pressure on this lad. He shoots. He missed it. Rebound is uh, to Lemons. Lemons shoots it. It's not good. Marion wins. Marion defeats Michigan City Rogers. 83 to 82. Unbelievable here. What a basketball game. Bill Green ecstatic. The Marion Giants on a free throw by young Kyle Persinger. Winning at 83 to 82 over Michigan City Rogers here tonight. Up the hoop. Now the motion begins. They're down to seven seconds. Jay Edwards. Edwards will take not a very good shot and knock it right at the bottom of the hoop. Right at the buzzer. <laughs> Pretty good shot. A whole lot better than I thought it was. I'll tell you what. Look better going through. And he did not get it where he wanted it, but he got it on the left side almost. Cut above almost anything I've seen this year. So this is his second stint at Marriott. Won two state titles first time around. Came back to Marion in 81. And a record of 120 wins and only 18 losses. That's 87% winning percentage since his return. They're about to add to that because they got a couple of points out of Eric Ewer. He has four. Now we're down to the final 421 of the ball game. All the Marion Giants fans begin to stand. And Edwards goes in and slams it home for his 25th point. Anthony Kelly with 16. Up toward it comes the other way. And a foul. The basket is going to count. 
Well, Bill Green there, he's a happy man. There's some real talent on either side of Mel Weissong there. There is Stanley again, and that's going to be the ball game. Two seconds, one, it's all over. It is history, and we have seen history made. Bill Green has become the first coach in the history of Indiana high school basketball to pick up five titles. Four at Marion, one at Indianapolis Washington High School. Marion has just won its second successive state championship, and at the same time, in the school's history, they have won five, four of those, by Bill Green. And there are very few living legends. You, my friend, are a living legend. I say you, my friend, are a living legend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me about it. You beat the hell out of it. Oh, you you Remember, I'll be using last year's grade in class as we're honoring last year's starters off the team. A 6'6 junior with a 6'1 scoring average, Harry Fewer. A 6'5 junior with an 8.9 scoring average, Kyle Persinger. A 6'6 junior with a 7.9 scoring average, Derek Key. A 6'3 junior with a 19.5 scoring average and led all scores in the final 16, Lyndon Jones. A 6'5 junior with a 24.6 scoring average and co MVP J. Edwards. Now let's welcome back the seniors as they join their teammates. Kevin Spurgeon couldn't be here. He's in Barbersville, Oklahoma, playing basketball. And Jamie Papp, let's hear it for the team.
Bavarian giant. Derek Key, starting forward. Kyle Persinger. There's our big center, Big Eric Ewer, 6'6", six, six, senior. Jay Edwards. He's one of our guards. Linda Jones. Both the last boys are going to IU. And there's your Marion Giants. And Coach Bill Green, the only man to win five state championships. And the Giants also trying to do something that's only been done one at a time. That's win back to back to back state titles. Back to back to back. <laughs> he's going to have he's not going to have enough fingers for all these rings, is he? <laughs> Well, that's why he's got two hands. <laughs> the Anderson Indians make their way on the floor, and here come the Giants. That same lineup they had all last year, starting once again this year. Giants 2-0 on the year. The Indians 2-1. First North Central Conference game for both teams. We got Anderson in. Way across and almost threw away. Good save by Jay. He'll take the 15-footer off balance, but he got nothing but the bottom of the net. And the Giants lead 12-10. Are you ready? And here, guess who? The Marion Giants. Starting lineup. The defending NBC champ. Two-time defending state champion. They're going for three in a row. They are number one in the state. Number one in the nation. Marianne with four youngsters, Kevin, Mike, Ellen, and Larry, graduate of Manuel High School here in the city. And also Indiana Central, or now the University of Indianapolis, in his 12th year at Marion. He split some time there. He was at the Giants coaching held from 1971 to 76, won 102, lost 48, got two state titles. Out of coaching from 77 to 81, working for a paper company. Got to the point he missed this particular atmosphere, came back into Marion in 1981. He has been there ever since, won 148 games, lost only 19, won two more state titles. He has won five North Central Conference championships, including, of course, this year and he will be the coach of the Indiana All-Stars this year. He also coached the squad in 1976. There's not much more Tom Hesh you can say about that guy. He's done it all. No, he certainly has. He's been a credit to the basketball program at Marion as well as uh had a chance a few years back after they'd won back-to-back -back state titles. In uh, 75 and 76, they had a chance to win uh, a third and it didn't come out that way. A minute and 42 seconds to go. The Marion fans behind us begin to feel the, the glow of another championship. They've got a 62-54 lead. Woody Edwards! Woody Edwards! Edwards' first field goal in the fourth period. He has 30 points. Now Bill Green, I think, begins to realize that he is on the doorstep of his sixth coaching state championship. That is something else nobody's come close to. Persinger. Number two on him. Well, Jerry Coleman's still fighting the battle for the Red Devils as he takes the ball inside. He goes around Ewer right here. Reverse layup. Persinger gets him and he'll be at the free throw line. 
Well, Hilliard Marion has certainly been the forerunner and has helped the statistics, but we've had a lot of state champions the last 12 years from here, semi-state in Fort Wayne. That's right. That has been uh, manufacturing rather regular state champions. Uh, of course, Marion comes through there, Fort Wayne North of the 1974. Well, Warsaw, Plymouth. Warsaw, Plymouth. Right. 14th point for Jerry Coleman. 5'9", senior. <laughs> Substitution now for Marion. Back into the ball game, Larlin Cooper. Going out is 52. Well, this is well, it's Persinger. Well. Make it, uh, we got Persinger coming back into the ball game. Eric Persinger. And going out is Eric Ewer. One minute to play in this ball game right now. And the Marion Giants are about to tie history. They have spread the floor, and it's all been over. Just watch it and enjoy it. and a fall. And the celebration begins on the Marion Giants sideline. And that man is in the process of picking up his 353rd career victory, his 252nd at Marion High School, and another state championship, number six. Number six, incredible. Nobody has five. I just can't imagine in this day and age being able to do that. It's so difficult to get out of your sectional or your regional or those semi-states. But to get this job done is remarkable. There will be massive changes now on the part of both ball clubs. Well, Lyndon Jones goes out for the final time. And Bill Green holds his hand in the sky. Lyndon is going out with 23 points. They will pull Edwards, I'm sure, at the next dead ball. He has 32 and looking for 33. Seconds to go. Sean Bledsoe with the ball as George Griffith has put some players off his bench on the floor to wind up this ball game. Troy Christopher rebounded by Marion. Edwards will take it. 35 points for Jay Edwards. Final three seconds. That's going to be all she wrote. It's gone. It's history. The Marion Giants have just tied history with their third successive state championship by beating Richmond presentation of the runner-up trophy and the championship trophy and the Prester Award winner in just a minute. One of your network spots, Lyndon Jones with 23, Jay Edwards had 35, and that doesn't leave many more. Hilliard has one of the assistant coaches out there with him right now. This is Ben White on Mel Congratulations team in Indiana High School history. Now they talk about the Franklin Wonder Five. This is the uh, Marion Wonder Squad, I guess. Wonder Squad is right, and uh, Wonder Coach. On fires on Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Here. All right, Jerry. We're looking at a replay of the final seconds of this ball game when Bill Green first begins to realize it's his. And there it is right there. He walks out, and there's a got to be a sigh of relief after all the pressure this ball club has undergone this year. Back to talk with more of the players and the coaches and the award ceremony coming up in just a moment is the shaking of hands with George Griffith and Bill Green. One of your network sponsors. To the Marion Giants. Presenting the medals will be the principal of Alexandria Shorty Birdsall, assisted by Amzi Miller, principal of New Prairie. And we're going now with the champions from Marion first, Lyndon Jones.
Number 10, Derek Barnett. Jay Edwards. Steve Walker. Kyle Persinger. Robert Stanley. Next, Derek Keyes. Anthony Butler. Eric Persinger. Scott Hunt. Krabby. The assistant coach, Ray Sims. Mel Weissong, another assistant. The athletic director, Jim Fricky. The head coach, Bill Green. And finally, the principal, Dr. John Marsha. Gates is in amongst that melee and we'll have an opportunity perhaps to chat with Bill Green or and now ladies and gentlemen now here come the uh, here the comes the presentation of the trophy trophy will be presented by Angie Miller principal of New Prairie High School This is the sixth championship trophy in the showcase, the trophy case at Marion High School. Bill Green has won five of them. A gentleman named Gene Thomas won the other in 1926. And you'll see that picture splashed across television screens and newspapers all across this great state of ours tomorrow. And Hilliard Gates is up there among them and trying to work his way into Bill Green to get a comment from the state's winningest ever high school basketball coach. Hilliard, I can't see you. If you're there, you are right now. Hilliard Gates. Here we are, and here is Bill Green. Bill, you get more emotional every year. If you win 10 in a row, I'm not sure you can take it. Here you, you know, you're getting older and I'm getting older. We do this. We might not make for seven months. <laughs> you asked me what you shot percentage-wise, and I answered 100%. Well, it was three, the last three years has been 100%. So we're just so proud of the kids, and thank you for all the nice things you said, but it just it's something unreal. It really is. Well, congratulations, Bill. They want to give the award now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Hilliard, it's time for the Trust Award. Let's go back up to the uh, platform. What these young men accomplished will be remembered forever and may never be duplicated in our lifetime. Indeed, it was a magnificent thrill, and we all should be thankful that we were able to be a part of it. One more time, let's show our appreciation for the greatest high school team to ever play the game.
seat for the Marion Giants unofficial video game festival. It's become a tradition when the Giants win their way to the Indiana High School Basketball Final Four. They come to this arcade near Indianapolis the night before the game. And for the last two years, they've gone from smashing little cars to thrashing helpless opponents. This year, Marion will try to make history to win their third state title in a row. No one has done that since the 1920-22 Franklin High teams known as the Wonder Five, starring the late Fuzzy Vanderveer. You have to understand the quality and the competitiveness of Indiana's high school basketball to appreciate what a feat three straight championships is. Superb teams and players come from all corners of the state. Man, you're in Indiana. These kids can put that ball in that bucket, and uh, they don't know what losing is. I mean, uh, they, they, they cut their teeth on a basketball. High school basketball is a passion in the Hoosier State like nowhere else. The fans are knowledgeable. You ought to see this little guy diagram his zone defense. This year, the state tourney is even bigger news than usual. Outside a sold-out Market Square Arena, fans bid and beg for tickets. What do you think your chances are? There's a lot of people who need not, tickets. Not very good, I'm afraid. How much will you pay? Well, I don't know. You got some? No, we don't. But how much would you pay if I had two good seats? Well, I don't know. We'd have to negotiate that. 35,000 fans wanted tickets. The tourney might soon be moved to Indy's Hoosier Dome to meet the demand. But the 17,049 lucky enough to get in this year are here for a classic matchup in the first semifinal. Marion against Bedford North Lawrence, a Cinderella team, making its first trip to the Final Four since 1943. The stars are being called this year's Hickory, the team in the movie Hoosiers that comes from a small town to take state. What does their coach think of that? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't buy that. I haven't even seen the movie, to be honest with you. Even still, the Stars fans were loving the role of confident underdogs. I'm going to do something very dangerous now. Take a Marion Giant t-shirt into the Bedford North Lawrence section. Let's see what happens. The stars feature Damon Bailey, a 6'2 guard called America's best freshman. Many fans are here just to watch this 15-year-old phenom that they've heard so much about. Damon is struggling with his shooting and foul trouble. Still, the star supporting cast fights hard against a much taller Marion team. Their upset dream is still alive in the fourth quarter, a fact that surprises Marion coach Bill Green. You get up five and then you quit. You think this team's going to fall dead. Every time we get up five, you give him two baskets. What the hell's going on? You say you got to want it, and then you get down and then you don't want it. Green didn't need to worry. The Giants rose up, and then Bailey fouled out with 20 points. There would be no Cinderella repeat of the Hoosiers script. Marion goes to the final with a nine-point victory. In the other semifinal, Richmond High and White is matched against Gary Roosevelt High, a battle of two traditional big school powers. Let's go, Richard! Let's go! Let's pump it up! Let's pump it up! Let's pump it up! Let's pump it up! The tempo of the cheering sections is as upbeat as the tempo of the game. Richmond had more left at the end for a six-point win to set up the final game with Marriott, a rematch from two years ago. The two winning teams in the semifinals don't exactly have a long time to savor those victories. One of the tough things and one of the unique things about playing in the Indiana Final Four is that both the semifinals and the finals are played on the same day. So even though the second semifinal game ended just about four hours ago, the two winning teams had to try to get emotionally up for the final. In the meantime, they were figuring out some surprising ways to pass the time. Yeah, you know, we'll probably go back and do a little gambling or something. Relax on, on our bed and just uh, wait for the game. Gambling? What do you mean gambling? Yeah, we do a little gambling. A little card game? Yeah, a little card game. See what we can do. <laughs> so you guys are pretty loose then if you're able to do that. Yeah, we're pretty loose. That's what we do. We keep our mind off the game and hopefully we can win a little money. <laughs> but soon, Jay Edwards and his buddies would change their poker faces to game faces. And a quiet Market Square Arena would become Bedlam for the 77th state title game. Hoosiers everywhere are listening to one of dozens of radio broadcasts. After the traditional back home again in Indiana, the whole state is ready. 
Richmond Red Devil fans are looking to the heavens, praying for an end to Marion's dominance, known as the Purple Rain. Richmond's revenge is a strong motivator, but the Marion mystique is even stronger. This is a team with all five starters headed for Division I college ball next year, coached by a man known as the living legend. Bill Green has five previous state titles, four at Marion. Even the team manager can dunk the ball. All of it is too much for Richmond. In the second quarter, the Giants begin to look unbeatable. All-American guards Jay Edwards and Lyndon Jones carry the Giants as they have all year. Soon, it's all over but the crying on both sides. The third straight title is locked up, and the history-making Purple Rain continues. Yes, I think we will. I think we are the greatest team that has ever played in Indiana. And I think uh, we will be the greatest team for a long time until somebody else does what we do. What they've done is win nine straight postseason games three years in a row. Indiana University only needed six tournament victories to win the NCAA title. I think you have to understand Indiana. As a kid, I grew up and I played, you know, and I didn't have success. And then to be able to be a coach and come back and coach talented kids to this, it's very, very emotional for all of us in Indiana. It's going to take some time to sink in, but I think um, a few weeks it'll really start to set in, and then I'll really look back on when I'm done with my playing days for good. That's when I'm really going to remember these times. The end of the game means the beginning of the party. First, the Giants get a police escort motorcade 60 miles back home on State Highway 37. Then a trip all over town on a fire truck. At 1 o'clock in the morning, most of the 30,000 people in this factory town are out to greet them. At 1.30 a.m., it's over to the school gym, where 5,000 fans are holding a pep rally. They know they've got something special here. It might be another 60 years before another school wins three state titles in a row. Until then, Jones, Edwards, Keyes, Persinger, and Ewer are the new Wonder Five of Indiana basketball. Okay, you've seen what Hoosier hysteria is all about. We sure had a lot of fun covering this year's Final Four in Indianapolis. But one of the things that makes this tournament great is the past history, all the great games and the great players that have played in this tournament. And after this timeout, we'll check out some of the history of what they like to call Indiana's game. Stay with us. John Wilczynski. Wearing number 11 from Marion, 6'4", averaged 9.6 points per game, Kyle Persinger. He will attend Indianapolis. Wearing number 10 from Marion, 6'6", averaged 10.5 points per game, he will attend Wake Forest, Derek Keyes. Number nine from Manchester, 6'8", averaged 19.5 points per game. He will attend the University of Dayton, Sam Howard. Wearing number eight from Gary Wallace, 6'4", averaged 30.1 points per game. He will attend the University of Louisville, Jerome Harmon. Wearing number seven from Warsaw, 6'7". He will attend the University of North Carolina, Rick Fox. Number six from Marion, 6'7". Average 7.6 points per game, Eric Ewer. Wearing number five from Western, 6-7, average 18.5 points per game. He will attend Butler, Brent Etherding. Number four from Richmond at 5-8, average 17.9 points per game, Jerry Coleman. 
Wearing number three from Lafayette Catholic, he's six feet, average 18.1 points per game. He will attend Purdue, Dave Barrett. Wearing number two from Salem, 6'4", average 31.1 points per game. He will attend William and Mary, Jimmy Apple. And now the pole Mr. Basketball for Indiana, wearing 1J from Marion, 6'3", 19.9 points per game. He'll attend Indiana University, London Jones. Number 1E from Marion, 6'5", 21.4 points per game. He will attend Indiana University, J. Edwards. The head coach, George Griffith of Richmond. The assistant coach, Larry Engel. Of this first half. They finally caught up and tied the ball game at 23. It's been tied five times, but now they are down by three, 49-46, with two and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Well, you notice that uh, Indiana has uh, the Marion lineup in there doing a good job with the matchup defense, but uh, I think for a couple of minutes in both games, uh, you see the five players from Marion on the, on the court. Yeah, that's where they are right now. Here's the foul being called inside against Kentucky. It'll be on number six. Uh, uh, that is Lamont Weir. We're going to talk at halftime with Don Bates, who was the game director, and we're going to talk about, this is the first time this has ever happened, five kids in the same school, and uh, one of the things we're going to talk about is they increased the roster to allow that to happen so that nobody else got shoved off that roster, but uh, that's what it is now. This is the unit that won three successive state championships, and that does.